In today's video, learn some crucial tips when using smart guides in Adobe Illustrator and that's all in under 5 minutes. So welcome back to the home of graphic design content on YouTube, Satori Graphics. Now smart guides are a very very useful resource within Illustrator and you're soon going to see exactly why that's so true. But first, you should be aware of a few settings in relation to smart guides. Now you can access the smart guide settings here in the preferences window or you can just press command or control K. Now you can change the color of your smart guides and I pretty much keep most things as a default settings for the smart guides. However, there is one setting I do change from time to time and that is the tolerance settings. Now this ranges from one to 10 and it is going to affect your workflow at different settings. Now if I increase it to the maximum of 10, let's head back into Illustrator on the document and let's create some shapes and see what happens. So I've pressed M for the rectangle tool and while holding down shift, I can actually click and drag to make a perfect square. Now watch as I make another square up towards the top of the original one while having the tolerance setting on 10. Now you can see Illustrator snaps the top left corner of the new square level to the first one. This is even though my crosshair of my cursor is way below that point. This is because I have the large tolerance settings activated. Having this large tolerance can be handy in certain situations, but if you want to have more freedom when using smart guides, come back into the preference settings and then reduce the tolerance down somewhat. So now I have a tolerance of one, I can start drawing my square wherever I want to, as opposed to having the smart guides set to a high tolerance. So I can continue making my square and the magenta smart guides will show me when the second square is perfectly flush and level with the original one. And also a neat addition to the smart guides is that Illustrator tells you when your cursor is exactly over a path, an anchor point, and also when a shape is not selected, it will indicate the center of an object. So using this center point, I can then draw a square exactly the quarter of the size of the original one, and the text reading path here tells me when I'm perfectly in line. Now something I forgot to mention at the very start of the video is that the keyboard shortcut for the smart guides is Command or Control U and this just simply toggles the smart guides being activated or switched off. Okay, so let's explore a little more with the smart guides and see why they're so useful for designing Illustrator. Now, if I hold down the Alt Option key with this square, I can click and drag over to the right and this will duplicate the square. The smart guides are telling me when I'm perfectly intersecting like so. Now, I can continue to use the smart guides to copy and paste a square and then resize it into this section here. Now, it would be a whole lot easier if I was working with strokes instead of fill colors, so quickly pressing Shift and X will resolve that issue. Then, I can press Shift and M for the Shape Builder tool and unite or remove areas to create a geometric shape really, really easily. Now holding down the Alt Option key allows you to remove sections with the Shape Builder tool. And so as you can see, smart guides are very, very helpful in creating flush and level designs, something many logo designs require. Now this is also true when using the pen tool, and I can use smart guides to direct me to a level plane to the upper part of the shape. And then I can hold down Shift to create a right angle triangle, all the while using the smart guides as I navigate across my design. And as you can see, it's nice and flush here at the bottom. And the smart guides in Illustrator are something overlooked by some designers, but they are very, very useful. Just remember to be mindful of those tolerance settings as there will be times that require a very low tolerance and other times you might want to use a large tolerance for your designs. And if you take your time and just look out for that purple magenta text, you can navigate around your workflow and have peace of mind that everything is indeed flush, level and perfect. So here I've headed into outline mode and that shows my design is perfectly linked together on this corner join here. So remember, if you want to keep expanding your awareness and learning essential skills as a graphic designer, do subscribe to this channel for weekly graphic design content. 
Like and share my videos on social media. And until next time, design your future today. Peace.